Today, the White House is celebrating the historic confirmation of Judge Ketanji Brown-Jackson. The Senate approved Judge Jackson in a 53 to 47 vote yesterday, clearing the way for her to become the first black woman to ever serve on the Supreme Court. ABC News senior Washington reporter Devin Dwyer joins me now for more on this. Devin, President Biden and Vice President Harris are expected to speak today. What can we expect to hear from them? Diane, this is very much a, p a political victory lap for this White House. And uh, officials I've talked to say this is going to be effectively checking the box on two major Biden promises. First, a promise that we all have talked about on the campaign trail, that he would nominate the first black woman justice, but also as president, that he would pick someone who is in the mold of Justice Stephen Breyer, a well-respected re uh, liberal jurist who has been on the court for a uh, quarter century, someone who is a pragmatist, who is a moderate, and and certainly, uh, Katanji Brown Jackson checks that box. So today is very much about marking those moments, Diane. And Devin Jackson will also be the first federal public defender and the first Florida raised judge on the Supreme Court. How might that have an impact on some of the high profile cases the court will hear in her first session? Well, there's no question that this is a conservative Supreme Court. It is solidly conservative. Six justices there. Her addition uh, certainly won't change that ideological makeup, but um, she's going to be there for a long time. Keep in mind, Ketanji Brown Jackson, uh, just 51 years old, the second youngest justice, she could be on the court for 30, 30 plus years. Uh, and so when, when a new justice ascends to the bench, um, they take the long game. She will obviously take some time to adjust to get her legs, but she she could see several shifts in the balance of power over her lifetime on the bench. And so it's very early to predict and project just how she will leave her mark, how she will change the court's jurisprudence uh, over that time. But suffice it to say, her friends and colleagues I've spoken to, Diane, say she is very much a consensus builder. She's disarming. She's collegial. Uh, and she has vowed uh, to take that uh, personality trait really behind the curtain at the court to try to engage her new, soon-to-be new colleagues. And Devin, when you think about the history of this moment, we're about to see the first female and first black vice president speak to celebrate the confirmation of the first female black Supreme Court justice. What do you think about that moment, uh, both in terms of the history and the politics? Yeah, it, it, it's remarkable, Diane. I mean, and I think, you know, at, at a certain point, you know, we, we just can't say it enough. I mean, uh, and not only remarkable because of the fact uh, of her race and gender in a judiciary across the board, not just in the Supreme Court, that is overwhelmingly white and male. Uh, for her to be at this moment, for the country to be at this moment is something, but she also brings so much groundbreaking uh, diverse experience and background to the bench, which I consider also significant. Uh, uh, you mentioned them earlier, the first Florida raised judge on there, grew up in Miami, uh, the daughter of public school teachers. Um, so, so that she'll bring that experience to the table. The first federal public defender, that's significant. She has actually had firsthand experience representing everyday Americans uh, in the judicial system who can't afford an attorney. Uh, a critical part of our uh, constitutional process, she has seen that and lived that firsthand. Uh, she's also a trial judge. Many of the current justices uh, were former government prosecutors. She will bring that experience, very fact-based uh, experience as a trial judge to the bench as well. So all of those dimensions uh, of her resume and her, uh, you know, her portfolio, uh, I think, will truly enhance the Supreme Court, aside from ideology and politics, Diane. And Devin, most Republican senators left the hall after the vote as Democrats celebrated the confirmation. What are you hearing about that moment? You know, a lot of people I've talked to, Diane, are simply shaking their heads at what they saw yesterday in that Senate chamber, not so much uh, pointing the finger at Republicans, uh, but just the fact that these theatrics by both sides of the aisle, both political parties in these uh, confirmation battles uh, have become so commonplace now. It's really, a, I think, a, uh, a testament to how low things have gotten in these battles just in the past, you know, decade, uh, two decades or so. Uh, to see Mitt Romney, the only Republican, stay in the chamber continue to applause really says a lot about his party right now of course only three Republicans supporting Kataji Brown Jackson uh, but it was it was certainly a remarkable moment at a time uh, when both parties say they want the court to look more like the country uh, and this moment certainly reflects that and Devin we keep hearing about new positive COVID-19 cases in Washington Speaker Pelosi is just one of several federal lawmakers uh, so will that affect the events planned for today 
You know, Diane, I was just thinking back to the last White House uh, Supreme Court uh, event that mm -hmm. became a super spreader. Amy Coney Barrett, you remember that in the Rose Garden with President Trump? It actually ended up rocking the White House, all the participants there. Uh, this is certainly a different moment, different point in the pandemic. But here we are again, uh, official Washington rocked by a number of cases. Cabinet officials, uh, White House officials, press secretaries have come down with COVID. Uh, this event this afternoon uh, will be held outside. It will, will be on the South Lawn. It's beautiful. Uh, but I think we can expect to see a few more masks in that crowd, Diane, and also one of the three Republicans who voted uh, for Ketanji Brown-Jackson will not be there. Susan Collins, she came down with COVID-19. Diane. All right, Devin Dwyer, thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.